Hospitals are in crisis across the country, threatened by rising costs and declining populations. RFD-TV's Sarah Mock has joined rural health care advocates as they visit the nation's lawmakers. Well, here in Washington, advocates from across the country in the rural health space are here to talk to their lawmakers about the priorities that they need to see accomplished in 2019 and beyond. We're lucky to be joined here by John Henderson. He's the CEO of the Texas Organization of Rural and Community Hospitals. John, first of all, give us the perspective on the ground. What is happening with rural health in Texas right now? Well, it's really tough, and we have a closure crisis in Texas. So there are 160 total rural uh, hospitals in the state of Texas just because of the size of the state and the geography of the state. But the problem we've had recently is that we've actually had 21 and now 22 this week rural hospital closures in the state of Texas since 2013. That's double any other state. What are kind of some of the factors that are causing those hospitals to close? Well, demographics are a challenge in rural Texas. We generally care for a, a, an older, poor, sicker population. Uh, and in some communities, uh, you see dwindling resources, uh, a lack of tax revenue. Uh, at the state level, we deal with Medicaid payment issues. And here in Washington at the federal level, we have the same challenges with the Medicare program. What does it mean for a rural community when a hospital closes? The further you are from care when you need it, regardless of whether you live in an urban community or a rural community, the worse your chances are. So in some of these closure scenarios, we're seeing situations where pregnant moms or elderly patients are literally 70 or 80 miles from the closest access point to care. And so that causes harm and it's uh, it's concerning. What are, is there solutions, maybe, maybe new technologies or innovations that could be used to kind of address maybe both of these situations at once? Yes, Texas data actually looks fairly good relative to other states, but we've been warning our elected officials to be skeptical of that because there are geographic disparities and I think we're just behind the national trend where other parts of the country really are feeling the effects of the opioid crisis. But I think there are solutions on the horizon. We've got better prescription monitoring programs and if we can integrate those into our records, if we can do a better job of giving patients access to treatment, uh, we, we can improve what is a significant problem. Absolutely. A little hope there to wrap us up. Again, thank you so much to John Henderson. He's the CEO of Torch in Texas. Uh, we'll be having a few more updates for you this morning from here in Washington at the National Rural Health Association's conference. Until then, back to you in the studio. Thanks for the update, Sarah. Now, as of this month, 94 rural hospitals have closed since 2010, with another 673 additional facilities considered vulnerable, representing one-third of all rural hospitals and affecting 11.7 million Americans.